A very good morning and welcome to you all. As we have just पहले तो हिंदी आज हिंदी दिवस है हिंदी दिवस की बहुत बहुत शुभकामनाएं हिंदी में उठकर देखिए इस सुबह का नजारा उठकर देखिए इस सुबह का नजारा हवा है ठंडी और मौसम भी है प्यारा सो गया चांद और छुप गया है रितारा कबूल करिए आप गुड मॉर्निंग हमारा ये सुबह सुबह इतने इंटरेस्टिंग गुड मॉर्निंग मैसेज आते हैं कि पढ़ के अच्छा लगता है और मैं मतलब सिद्धांत को इनवाइट करती हूं कि वो साइंटिफिक सेशन शुरू करें थैंक यू मैम सर राजा के नाउ आई वुड लाइक टू इनवाइट डॉक्टर राजा टू प्रेजेंट अ सेमिनार ऑन ऑस्टियोथेरेटिस नी थैंक यू सर so good morning everyone uh, respected teachers and dear colleagues uh, i am thankful to the esteemed gp association for uh, giving me a chance to present a topic of mine uh, my current topic is osteoarthritis in knee one of the very common topics we all face in our practices so let's see and have a little discussion about it first to summarize this is the normal knee in the knee joint is made of this is the femur and this is the tibia and there is this cartilage cartilage is a slippery tissue which provides smooth surface for the joint motion it also acts as a cushion between this femur and the tibia and there is a synovial membrane all around it which produces the synovial fluid which helps in lubrication of the joint so the cartilage is all around the femur here and here in two parts in the tibia so as the osteoarthritis starts in the very early stages in the mild osteoarthritis you can see the cartilage starts degenerating here in small small places this is the first early sign of osteoarthritis in the x ray when the cartilage degenerates on both the sides the joint space here decreases starts to decrease and you will see a decrease in the joint space and whenever the cartilage starts breaking down as a uh, uh, the body produces these small bony spurs which we call as osteophytes as a reverse mechanism body tries to compensate and osteophytes are produced so in the early x rays you will just see these osteophytes when there is a minimal damage to the cartilage you will not find much of the x rays but you will see just one or two few osteophytes as we progress to the moderate stage the cartilage damage becomes more prominent and the number of osteophytes they increase a lot both on the femur side and the tibia side and as this cartilage uh, gets damaged the space provided uh, the space occupied by it becomes less and on the x ray we see a decrease in the joint space now the patient is having earlier when there is early osteoarthritis the patient just starts having pain after let's say prolonged resting that's the first sign if the patient is sitting for long period and whenever he uh, tries to stand then he will feel some pain that is the first sign of the osteoarthritis and patient will feel a little mild joint stiffness after prolonged rest in the moderate stages now as the uh, osteoarthritis progresses the patient now starts feeling the pain during daily activities also like kneeling or running or walk or walking briskly or climbing stairs and now the patient feels prominent joint stiffness especially the morning stiffness whenever the when the patient wakes up he feels a stiffness in the joint and after sitting for the long periods whenever he stands he feels stiff joints again now comes the severe osteoarthritis most of the cartilage is gone let's understand the cartilage is a layer over the bone the bone is a very rough hard structure when the bone touches the bone patient feels immense pain cartilage usually prevents it so when the cartilage is destroyed the lubricating surface is gone and now the bone started touching the bone during the knee movement and that's the phase when patient feels excruciating pain even on simple movement you will see that all over the there these are the osteophytes these are developed by the body the body is trying to compensate for the cartilage by trying to produce osteophytes 
but it doesn't help because cartilage is the only structure which is smooth and provides lubrication when it is gone both the, it's the just the hard bone that is left and there will be pain and stiffness and patient will be having a lot of problems so this is a summarize now let's go in in detail what is osteoarthritis it is a chronic progressive degenerative wear and tear of the articular cartilage in study it has been seen the almost 46% of the people will be having osteoarthritis in their lifetime almost half of the people in this whole world at some point of their in their life they will be having symptoms of osteoarthritis it is such a common problem usually it's prevalent in more than 45 years of age when the cartilage starts to tear out when in the ages of less than 50 years the men's are more involved than the females but in cases when the osteoarthritis starts after 50 years the, it is seen that the females are more involved than the men and it may be because of the withdrawal of estrogen by the menopause that can be a triggering factor now let's talk about the clinical features as i said when there is minimal damage to the osteoarthritis the patient may not feel pain at all if you just get an mri done you may feel, see a few cartilage erosions but the patient may not having any pain when it progresses the first the patient starts pain having after prolonged rest when the patient wakes up or when the patient sits for a long time as the cartilage damage increases now the pain starts during the daily activities also like especially this is the most common uh, problem which the uh, patient says in our practice because in our uh, indian system of toilet the patient has to squat and the first complaint the patient says that whenever i rise from the squatting position i feel a lot of pain and i have to take a support somewhere to rise again the patient will be having pain while climbing the stairs uh, while cycling and it will be aggravated by activity and it will be relieved by rest and when the osteoarthritis worsens further then the pain starts having even just on the normal movement normal walking also now the second complaint the most complaint complaint the which a patient says is the knee stiffness typically it's an early morning stiffness but usually it gets relieved in less than 30 minutes as the patient starts moving the stiffness decreases this is in contrast to rheumatoid arthritis because rheumatoid arthritis the most common sign is also morning stiffness in rheumatoid arthritis the morning stiffness is prolonged it is at least 45 minutes but in osteoarthritis it usually relieves in less than 30 minutes and after prolonged sitting the patient feels stiffness now giving way when the patient walks for a long period patient feels that the like his legs are little rubbery like giving away this is also a sign sometimes the patient feels now when the osteoarthritis increases and the synovium gets inflamed it tries to uh, produce more of the synovial fluid because of which there occurs swelling around the knee joint the swelling around the knee joint can be of two types it can be a soft swelling or it can be a hard swelling in the moderate stages the synovium gets inflamed and it produces synovial fluid and you can see there is the patient may present with a lot of swelling around the knee joint but when the osteoarthritis becomes very severe the osteophytes which i showed they try to increase on the outer side and they increase the size of the bone around the knee joint and this is called as hard swelling this is because of the osteophytes the bony increase and in the moderate stages it is because of the synovial inflammation and increased production of the synovial fluid now comes the crepitus when the cartilage is damaged to a progressive extent you can feel a crackling or a grating sound produced because when this cartilage gets damaged when the bone touches the bone but the, when the bone rubs over the bone it produces a crackling or a grating sound it can be felt if, if you just put your uh, palm over the patella and ask the patient to move uh, flex and extend you will feel this sound this is a sign which occurs when almost 50% of the cartilage is gone 
it is more common in patello femoral arthritis because when you put your palm you are feeling the patello femoral joint so if you are feeling this crepitus sound it means there is some problem in the patello femoral joint and knee strengthening exercises are needed when this knee pain and stiffness and swelling increases the patient is not able to fully extend the knee joint is not able to extend the knee fully and there occurs a flexion contracture in severe cases when you will see ask the patient to lie down you will see that there is a gap here it, there will be a gap here you can put your palm inside the patient will not be able to extend the knee on examination this is the joint line here this is the patella if this is the inferior foro patella and this is the medial joint line and the lateral joint line because the osteoarthritis in more than 90% of the cases starts on the medial side if you will palpate this area you will find the tenderness it's best to palpate when you flex the knee to 90 degrees and this is the patella you take the level of this inferior polo patella move on the medial side and when you put your thumb here the patient will be having excruciating pain now the flexion contract normally the range of the uh, motion of the knee joint is from 0 degrees that is straight uh, to the bed to 140 degrees of flexion when uh, the knee is unable to extend to 0 degrees either actively or passively even if you push the knee from here the patient it will not come down and your palm can go behind the knee then it is a flexion contracture then it is a severe form of osteoarthritis because with this bent knee patient will be having a lot of problem while walking in the severe stages now the leg starts going to bend normally our legs are straight the legs are a pillar of a building and for any building to sustain the pillar has to be straight as the osteoarthritis here increases now the leg which was initially like this straight now is it's bent on the inner side because the cartilage here gone and this side of the bone the femur and the tibia touches which leads to the increase bend inward bending of the legs that is that is what we call as genu varus it occurs in the severe grade of osteoarthritis diagnosis for osteoarthritis x-ray is almost sufficient in 90% of the cases in occasional cases you can go for the ct and mri and usually the blood markers are normal like esr if you want if you have a little confusion that the patient is maybe having pain in the joints because patient may having uh, osteoarthritis of the interphalangeal joints and you have a confusion you can go for the blood investigation like anti ccp or ra factor or esr in rheumatoid arthritis it will be increased while in osteoarthritis all the blood markers will be more or less normal all the inflammatory markers will be normal so let's talk about the x rays as i said these are the small osteophytes which are produced by the body trying to compensate for the loss of the cartilage it is a repair attempt of the body in response to the loss of cartilage and as the severity of the osteoarthritis increases their number increases and as the number increases it increases the width of the tibia and the femur and it causes the hard swelling of the knee joint so when this cartilage normally this is the normal uh, uh, normally on the x ray you can find a space more than 5 mm in the ap x ray this is the space which is usually occupied by the cartilage as the cartilage gone and the bone the femur and the tibia starts to touch each other each other the space gets decreased this is called usually 90% of the cases this is the lateral side and this is the medial side in 90% of the cases you will see that the medial side is gone if compared on the lateral side the joint space here is decreased because the space which was occupied by the cartilage is gone and the femur is now almost touching the tibia as a response the bone just below this cartilage area it gets sclerosed and you can see it's more white than the rest of the bone what we'll call as subcondyl sclerosis and you will find small 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 osteophyte this is small osteophyte small 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 bones elsewhere the one of the most important thing which every practitioner should follow whenever you are asking for an x-ray of the knee joint 
it has to be a weight bearing antero posterior and, and lateral x ray because when the patient wear, uh, puts weight uh, many times you will see th that the if you if the patient is not weight bearing sometimes you will see it's almost a normal x ray when the patient bear weights this femur and the tibia touches in the each other and many times we have seen it's only on the weight bearing x ray you will see that there is a decreased joint space see on the lateral side the space is more on the medial side the space is less if it's a non weight bearing if non weight bearing means the patient is lying down while doing the x ray there is no weight or stress here then sometimes the joint space appears normal and when you make the patient stand while doing the x ray then the actual picture comes and the the uh, joint space decreases so it is a must for any x ray of the knee joint where in which you are suspecting osteoarthritis you should ask the technician to do a standing weight bearing x ray antero posterior review usually this is more than 5 mm in a normal knee joint and if it is less than 3 mm it means that the the osteoarthritis is coming up and when it becomes cvi it can even cause genu virus now this is genu virus normally if we put make a line straight here the line should come like this because as i said that the legs are like pillars of a building and these are usually exactly straight when this is gone the medial side the bone tends to uh, incline inwards and this you get this angle this is called the genu virus now there is another view because standard we go for an antero posterior and a lateral view but in knee joint other than the tibio femoral joint this there is this patella and the femoral joint normally this joint is not seen on an ap and a lateral view so if you are suspecting an osteoarthritis you should ask the uh, technician to do what is called a merchant view here the patient lie down here and at a 30 degree this is the beam and this is the cassette the x ray is done like this and you will see the beautifully this patellar femoral joint so if there is any arthritis here you will be seeing in this view only so if you want to go for a full radiological investigation for osteoarthritis you should go for three views ap view standing lateral view and the merchant view now let's talk about the treatment basically osteoarthritis has no cure there is just no cure till now for osteoarthritis what where we can do is attempt to prevent its progression whatever cartilage is gone it's gone you cannot regenerate it but you can prevent it to degrade further and you can you can do other things to minimize the pain but till now there is no cure for osteoarthritis which has been developed let's talk about the activity because osteoarthritis is not a disease which you can treat by medicines medicines is less let's say is around just uh, it will help around just 10 to 20% 80% depends on the other factors which have to be taken care of now the activity when the patient is suffering from osteoarthritis the patient must understand now there he has to have a balance between the rest and activity if we do too much of exercise the joint will get inflamed the synovial will get inflamed and the pain will increase if he do very little activity the stiffness will increase so there has to be a balance so if if it's an early osteoarthritis and patient was earlier used to playing badminton or tennis or go for jogging which are high impact activities which uh, uh, puts lot of pressure on the cartilage you can suggest the patient to go for low impact activities like cycling or swimming there is no problem in cycling in early stages of osteoarthritis many times the patients ask us ki ki hum cycle chala sakte hain ki nahi so you can easily ask them they are you can go for cycling that's not a problem and swimming actually helps the patient increases the movement but you will not suggest him to go for the high level sports like badminton or tennis exercise now this is the most important treatment modality which we have to uh, teach the patient and this is the least the patient follow in our let's if uh, in our 50 patient of osteoarthritis the uh, 40 don't go to, don't want to go to the physiotherapy department 
they think is useless and they are just paying unnecessary for the charge for the physiotherapy. They just want to take the medicines. You have to make the patient understand that even if you take the medicines whole your life, you will not really get relieved of your pain. You have to go for the exercises. Now exercises can be of these types. One is the range of motion exercises so, you, so that your joints remain flexible. Otherwise, your joint will become still stiff and it will uh, cause contractures. Second, you have to stretch your joints. That's very important. And third, you have to do the strengthening exercises also. Because you have to build up the muscles around the joint because the cartilage, whatever is gone, is gone. It has to be taken care by the muscles around it. If the muscles get strong, they can minimize the pain. And also, the, you have to ask the patient to go for aerobic exercises, which is important in all the other treatment, all the other modalities also. Now, what are aerobic exercises actually? Any exercises that increases your heart rate and makes you a little bit short of breath. That is what is called an aerobic exercise. What it does, it decreases the pain by stimulating the release of endorphins, which are pain relieving hormones. And it also helps in a better sleep, because otherwise the patient feels pain at night. How it can be done? While walking, you walk just enough to get out of the breath, but still you are able to do the conversation with your friends. And cycling and swimming. But these are aerobic exercises. It just charges a little to you, but it doesn't harm you. So, as I said earlier, if you will not go for the knee movement, you will develop a flexion contracture here. So, you have to stretch your knee. This is best than you put any towel or anything below your heel and you ask the patient to uh, uh, force your knee backwards. It will, it will be contracting the cordyceps here either with hand or just by dynamic. You tell the patient that you try to push your knee to the bed and you put a pillow here. So this will lead to stretching of this uh, hamstrings here and cordyceps and it will make the knee straight. Uh, sir? No, sir, knee. If we put the knee on the knee, then the knee will flex. We have to straighten the knee. So, I have to do this so that the patient can be able to do this. Because osteoarthritis will try to flex this knee. The, the disease will, with the disease, the patient will flex the knee. And you have to make the knee straight. You have to try to keep the knee straight. And to develop this quadriceps, you can ask the patient to sit and uh, try to lace the uh, legs and in earlier cases the patient is fit, the patient can put a sandbag here. It will increase the resistance and this will help with in the building of the cordyceps here. Now for the cordyceps here as you were saying, now the patient can put a roll here and put this knee over. This will help in strengthen the cordyceps here. This is for the strengthening cordyceps and you will ask the patient to raise the heel here, raise the ear so that the, the, the most important thing that the, the patient should keep the knee straight. If he will not do the exercise, gradually this knee will flex and patient will not be able to straighten it. So daily 100 times he have to ensure that, it, he, uh, that his leg gets straight. This is bad by raising the heel here. Again most of the exercises are like this only you have to, most of the exercises are focused on making this leg straight, trying to lift the heel. Because by lifting the heel, there will be a stretching of the hamstrings here and the cordyceps will build up. Because for raising the heel, the cordyceps work here. So you have to strengthen the cordyceps and stretch the hamstrings. Again, you can keep the, you have to keep the knee flexible in severe cases. Just ask the patient to keep the knee straight, then again flex, then again knee straight, then again flex. Weight loss, obviously all of the weight gets transmitted to the knee joint and any weight loss will decrease the force on the knee and it will help the patient in a lot better way. Massage, the muscle, if you do a massage with a let's say a warm mustard oil or a coconut or olive oil, whatever is available to the patient, the muscle they relax, they decrease the stiffness of the knee joint by relaxing the muscles and it also increases the blood circulation. 
So you can ask your patient that whatever oil you, is available in your home and in our area is mainly the mustard oil which is available freely. You can ask them to warm it, warm it up and do a simple massage, not very hard. It is just to be avoided in, when the, in the period when the knee is inflamed because in some time during the course of the illness, the knee will be swelling and there will be red when there is inflammation of the synovium. During that time, the patient has to have a ice therapy. During that time, the patient doesn't have to do a massage, but in most of the chronic cases, the massage is helpful. Footwear. But these are the small, small things. I'm taking a lot of details regarding this because in this disease, there is no medicine, basically. So you have to take care of the small, small things. The shoe, it has to be a soft, thick sole, no heels and enough room for toes. Earlier, uh, uh, orthopedic surgeon used to recommend what is called a lateral wedge in sole. We'll try to increase the height on the lateral side of the shoe, but now it's not recommended because studies have found that it may increase the pain. So it has to be just shoes, soft thick sole and no raised heels. Stairs. Many patients say that our uh, room or our house is on the first floor or on the second floor. So you can ask them if possible, they can have some type of handrails in the stair to, so can they can take, uh, can take a support by climbing the stairs. And they should go upstairs with one foot at a time and put your good leg first. These are the small, small thing because if a patient has a house is on the first floor, he can't change the house. So he has to do these small precautions to have minimal pain. Walking aids, if the pain is getting severe, you can ask the patient to take a cane. It will help some weight will be taken by the cane and some weight it will be relieved, uh, relieving the knee of some pain. In severe cases, uh, you can go for a wheeled walker also. It reduces the mechanical loading on the knee joint and the pain. Kneecap and knee brace. This is kneecap. Most of the patient you will see they will be wearing a kneecap. The kneecap is more a placebo effect it may provide some support to the knee, but the patient feels some uh, uh, a positive response like a placebo. So there's no harm in putting a kneecap, but they should be uh, using kneecap only while they're walking. Because many times the patient keep wearing the kneecap even while they're sleeping. That will result in muscle wasting because they have to do a lot of exercises. So you can ask them even if you want to wear a kneecap, just wear only when you are walking, even when you are sitting, you should take out the kneecap. In severe cases, you can go for the brace. Braces are of two types. One is called unloader brace and second is called a support brace. Suppose your medial side of the knee is more damaged and the lateral side is fine. Then we go for this unloader phase which has a hinge on the side. It tries to shift the weight away from the affected portion of the knee. It takes the weight from the medial to the lateral side. The studies have so shown that it is, may not be very effective. It's subjective to the patient. If the patient finds it friendly, they can go for it. But most of the uh, surgeons now don't recommend the knee brace. And second is the support brace. It helps support the entire knee load. But in our practice, we don't recommend the patient to go for the knee brace. Now, if there is a knee contracture here, because if the patient has to walk, his leg has to be straight. You cannot walk on a bent knee. If you try to walk on a bent knee, it will affect your hip and spine and it will start degeneration here also. So anyhow, you have to make your leg straight. So for any, if any osteoarthritis patients come to your clinic, you have to examine the patient while he is lying on the couch. When the patient is sitting, you can't judge whether he is having a knee flexion contracture or not. So it's very important you ask the patient to lying down on a couch and you see whether is the knee is touching the ground or not. If it's not, you have to make it straight. What you can do, you can ask the patient to apply a foam traction here at home, let's say two hours at night, two hours in the morning. It will help, it will stretch here. Or you can put a sandbag here. You can ask patient to put a sandbag here that will press. Or you can ask the patient to do, uh, the attendant to do a manual stretching, trying to push the knee gradually, let's say 50, 100 times in a day. But anyhow, you have to make the leg straight because if it's keep on flexed, it will cause damage to all the other bony areas here and the pain will increase a knot. 
heat therapy it improves the circulation it relaxes the muscles you can ask the patient to apply an electric heat pad which is freely available in the market or in the physiotherapy clinics there are short wave diathermy machines patient can go for that in most of the patient they take wax wax is a very uh, uh, cheap thing which is even you can apply even in remote villages when, when electricity is a problem you just take a wax and you melt it and apply it over the affected area and when it cools down you can again collect it and keep it and again reapply it so this is the cheapest and the most easily thing for short duration you can apply the ice pack to decrease the swelling tens now this is available in the physiotherapy department this is the most effective machines in cases of osteoarthritis what is tens it is a small machine that changes the way the nerves understand pain by sending tiny electric shocks to pads placed in the skin the pads are placed over the skin it is available in the physiotherapy clinics and if the patient is willing to come to the physiotherapy department you can prescribe them tens daily ointment or oil the good thing about them there is no harm from it if if a patient is taking nsaids it's much better you can ask them to apply 5 to 10 times in a day it, it can be an nsaid ointment it can be a capsaicin cream but it are comparatively much much safer it's much better to go for nsaid medicines than to apply even oil 10 times so this is much more uh, recommended to apply oil or ointment as much as possible instead of taking medicines now let's talk about the medicines medicine first of all the pain killers paracetamol is the first line of treatment if it's uh, slight pain early osteoarthritis you can ask the patient paracetamol but it works only in very early cases otherwise not very effective then comes the cox2 inhibitors can be celecoxib etoricoxib other after that are the nsaids it can be naproxen ibuprofen or diclofenac tramadol is seen it's usually not recommended in osteoarthritis because it it usually adverse uh, it causes adverse effects in latest american academy recommendation naproxen is shown is to be the most effective drug for pain in osteoarthritis the american academy in 2021 uh, they had a paper published and they have said that ne the naproxen has got the highest efficacy among all the painkillers for osteoarthritis of the knee now comes the cartilage supplements our cartilage is made of collagen typically there is a type 2 collagen in the cartilage of the knee joint and there are these other uh, uh, chemicals called glucosamine and chondroitin sulfate these are the uh, chemicals from which the cartilage of the knee joint are made of now these supplements are available in the market so uh, currently among these type 2 collagen is the most uh, recommended uh, chemical right medicine right now but it is costly i think one medicine costs around uh, one tablet costs around 50 to 60 rupees and it has to be because all these act very slowly so at least the patient has to take let's say 3 months so this is uh, for the rural patient is quite difficult to prescribe a tablet uh, 50 rupees a day but if the patient can afford it among these th uh, these three this is uh, much more recommended and for the other patient you can go for this glucosamine and chondroitin sulfate now there is a different drug called diacerine now this is another group of drug it has an anti inflammatory properties it is slow acting and it has a long term effect now this is drug is specifically for osteoarthritis uh, as a substitute for the painkillers because you can't prescribe painkillers for longer duration to the patient this has a very uh, less negative effects so uh, this is uh, currently we prescribe to almost every patient of osteoarthritis to take diacerine its usual dose is 50 mg twice a day now comes the calcium for any bony disorder orthopedic surgeon calcium it will be there in every prescription usually uh, the recommended daily intake is 1000 mg and usually in young people it should be from the dietary supplement from the diet not from the calcium supplements now in the in calcium is uh, maximum in the dairy products in the milk yogurt and the cheese the one cup of milk is usually 300 mg of calcium and whether it's a whole milk or the skim milk because now the the people are very much uh, aware and many people are going for the skim milk 
but the calcium content remains the same so whether it's a skim milk or the whole milk the calcium is the same so that's not a problem if you are taking even the skim milk other than these dairy products the calcium is in good content in the dark green leafy vegetables like broccoli and people who are taking fish well they are already getting calcium in their diet especially the salmon and the sardines if you can get them usually it's available to the cities which are on the sea coast in gorakhpur area this is a problem but who those who are fish eaters normally they don't uh, get osteoporosis in their uh, x rays now if, if the patient is let's say getting old uh, more than 50 or 60 years old and the uh, pay for to get 1000 mg daily the calcium supplements are provided usually calcium are of two types calcium citrate and calcium carbonate calcium carbonate needs acid to dissolve so it has to be taken with meals while calcium citrate it doesn't need acid to dissolve it can be taken any time and the patient who are have, taking antacids for them calcium citrate is better if if you are not taking any antacid you don't have any acidity problem you can go for calcium carbonate also now the, the recent i was yesterday only i was reading a latest article by the journal of american academy of orthopedic surgeons they have shown this great increase in this curcumin which is found in turmeric this is our asian thing which is in india only but now it's getting hype even in the us and the western world curcumin uh, has anti, anti inflammatory properties but the problem is that in turmeric only 3 to 5% is curcumin so it's not like it if we are taking one or two spoon of turmeric in our food we are getting curcumin because it's so much less quantity so to be effective you you have to take a supplement where it's concentrated curcumin only so in the us now this is getting a popular drug and the doctors are progressing this one is this curcumin and one is this ginger extra extract both are i think our ancient indian uh, medication prescribed by our ancestors this is also anti inflammatory properties you can get it with ginger tea and even if you are putting fresh ginger in your food that's enough so other than that those medications the ginger extract and the curcumin is now being very much recommended by the orthopedic surgeon vitamin d i was uh, talking with one of the us surgeons last year and they said that the vitamin d in all of the races in the world the lowest is in indians they say that we get patients or indian patient and when we get the vitamin d it's come even low as 3 4 5 which is usually not seen in any other race somehow the indians have got the lowest uh, vitamin d in them so uh, but you can't uh, do go for testing of vitamin d to every opd patient so usually we prescribe vitamin d to almost our every patient if the patient is willing you can go for the vitamin d test but in our practice we usually take it granted that patient will be having low vitamin d so it's better to give them vitamin d usually uh, overdose is very rare so you can safely give vitamin d at least 10 tablets 60000 units once a week total 6 lakhs international units so it should be given to almost at least this area is more prone to vitamin d now vitamin c this is taken very lightly the limsi oh this is very um, uh, taken very lightly by the everyone but it has quite and uh, it is an antioxidant and it is quite uh, good for the collagen of the knee joint it has collagen promoting properties so you should be prescribing to vitamin c to your patients other than vitamin d now come if the patient is not getting relief from the medications the next step is intraarticular injections intraarticular injections can be corticosteroid usually there are two types of corticosteroids methylprednisolone or and trimcinolone methylprednisolone what we commonly say dipomedrol and tri trimcinolone is canacord the studies have shown that both are almost equally effective because some patient may ask whether which is better but more, the studies have shown the almost both are equally effective so it doesn't matter whether you are applying methylprednisolone or uh, trimcinolone second you can apply hyaluronic acid because cartilage is made of hyaluronic acid so earlier there came this injection that you can apply once a year but now the studies have uh, shown that the earlier the latest american academy uh, have shown that it is not recommended now 
because in many cases the, there is seen an increase of pain. So intra-articular steroids is recommended by the American Academy currently that it should be applied if the patient is not having relief from the medicines but hyaluronic acid is not recommended now and it can, the steroid injection can be applied safely 3 to 5, 4 times in, in a year in one knee. So if, you have, if the patient is taking 3 injections in one year, it is fine, it will not cause damage. But if the frequency increases, then the damage will be more than the positive side. So if you are applying a steroid injection, you, you should restrict to 3 to 4 times maximum in a year. But this is safe right now and this is recommended by the latest journals that you should apply it if the patient is not getting relief from the medicines. Now, now uh, there has come a, uh, this is interesting thing recently what we is called a platelet rich, rich plasma. Now the platelets are separated, you take the blood of the patient by centrifugation, you play, uh, uh, platelets are separated, you concentrate it and you again re the knee. With this, this has this theory that the platelet contains growth factors which may decrease inflammation. Again, this is, uh, this does not cause any harm to the patient, but th this will take whole day because in the morning you have to take the blood, you have to send the blood to the pathology, they will centrifuge it and they will make it platelet rich, again it will be injected. So this is, has come a new modality which is promising and the articles are showing that this may relieve pain. Again, it may not be very helpful, but this is also not much side effects. So if the patient is not having relief even after intra-articular steroid injections, this is the third line of uh, phase of treatment, you can go for the platelet rich plasma. So first is the medication, second is the intra-articular steroid and third is the platelet rich plasma. And the last comes the surgery. If the patient uh, fails, all these treatment modalities fail and there is a severe osteoarthritis, then comes the surgery. Now, the surgery is of two types. One we call is HTO, what is a high tibial osteotomy. And second is the TKR, what is total knee replacement. Usually the patients are aware only of TKR. The common people, they know either their medicines or either there is a knee replacement. Patients are not much aware of this wonderful surgery and this is a, this earlier, this surgery was very popular when the knee replacement marketing started, this surgery was kept down by most of the marketing companies. But recently, this uh, uh, surgery has again come back. Now the Japanese and the Chinese, more, they are more trying to do these surgeries in comparison to the knee replacement. Now what is this high tibial osteotomy? In Jiru virus, when the medial half of the knee is damaged, and the lateral half of, uh, is preserved. I will show you in this diagram. Normally the leg is straight. The most important thing in orthopedics is alignment. If the leg is straight, everything will be fine. If your pillars are straight, no matter what, the pain will be less and patient will be uh, fine. But if there occurs a bending, let's say the, the, the leg should be straight. Now in genu virus, what happens? The medial side is gone and the legs try to start bending inwards and there occurs an angle. This is what is causing a problem. So what is done in high tibial osteotomy that if this side is gone and the lateral side is fine because when the uh, leg bends inwards the weight here, this is the weight line, the weight which gets transmitted here, it's, it, is, it comes on the medial side which is damaged. So what we do, we do a osteotomy here, we cut the bone here and we make it straight and we put a plate here so that again the line comes straight. Now when it becomes straight, the weight is transmitted to the lateral side of the joint which is normal. So in early uh, stage, in moderate stages of osteoarthritis, when half of the knee joint is gone but this side is fine and the patient has got bent leg, you can go for this surgery you can make the leg straight, now the weight will be on the lateral side and from now on if the patient do exercises and takes care of good habits so that the joint degradation does not go further, the, it will get absolute good results. But this has a limitation that only this side of the knee joint is damaged. 
if the lateral side is also gone then this surgery will not work but in most of the cases which which comes in our practice 90% of the patients have knee joint damaged on the medial side only so this is the thing let's say this if this is the x ray of the patient which comes in your opd see the lateral side is fine there is this space it means the cartilage is preserved now this x ray is most over 90% of the patients have these x rays only and this medial side is gone so now the weight is coming from here because this leg tibia is bent inside and weight is passing here and when the weight is passing here the femur is touching the tibia and patient is having pain what we do we cut it here and we make this here straight now what is the leg is bending here it becomes straight now the weight is transmitting here and this is the normal side so the, the most of the patients they feel very much relieved in pain by this silt surgery this what we tell to the patient is agar aapki gaadi kharab ho gayi hai to do option hai ya to aap service kara lo ya aap nahi khareed lo this is what we call as servicing of your car aapne apne ghutne ki servicing kar di usko aapne seedha kar diya to ye agle 10 15 saal kheech lega aur agar aapki gaadi ekdam hi kharab ho gayi hai to fir aap nayi gaadi khareed lo to let's say jaise ye this is how the patient see how much bending of legs were there but only medial side was uh, damaged so we did an osteotomy and we straightened the leg and the patient was doing wonderfully fine so if the patient is having this bending of the leg or on the x ray you see that the, the only prerequisite it should be having that this the joint space should be maintained here if this is also gone it means both side of the knee is gone then this surgery will will not work but when you will see your patient you will see 90% of the patient this will be the scenario so if the patient is bent leg you just straighten it up and the patient can do uh, uh, fine for the rest of his life now comes the total knee replacement if both this medial side and the lateral side cartilage is gone at both the places the femur and the tibia are touching each other then high tibial osteotomy will not work and then you have to go for the knee replacement then this is the last resort then you should not wait if the patient is having severe pain even just on walking and on the x ray you see both sides are gone then total knee replacement is also a wonderful surgery then you should not wait i will just show one case currently this patient is in our hospital only i just operated it last week only see where the both sides of the knee joints were gone see how much the knee is uh, damaged here almost all the cartilage and the bone is gone so we just did a knee replacement here in knee replacement what we are doing i will just show you the first slide that what is exactly done in the knee replacement ha huh. see this is our cartilage and now this is gone the bones are fine the bones jaise pehle thi waise hi abhi hai what we are doing in the knee replacement we are just replacing this cartilage area with a metal area here also and here also we are not doing anything else we are not touching this bone we are not touching this bone only this area is removed and a small thin layer of metal is applied here and here so that the bone doesn't touch and between these two metal surfaces the knee starts moving so actually the knee replacement is a misnomer because with knee replacement the patient understand this whole of thing is gone it's not it's not like that it's just removing the surface the just the replacing the surface of the knee joint i will just show you the x ray again see with the, in the x ray is looking but only this this is just one the covering same as the cartilage covering this is just very thin layer let's say 8 mm thin layer is here of the metal an 8 mm thin layer of the metal here this is just a rod to put this here this is a rod just like a nail we put in the here so that it it can be holded up but the only thing which is replaced here 8 mm here one layer and this hemi circular layer 8 mm here in the ap view it's in this view it's like that the whole of this replay but it's not like this the bone is here it's just the outer layer so we just replace these two layers and the patient is pretty fine so this was one side and this was the other side so these are the different treatment modalities 
uh, which we should follow for uh, osteoarthritis of the knee is not like the knee replacement is the only surgery. It should be done where it is indicated and it has wonderful results. But there, for every stage, there is a different modality and we should be following that. Thank you. Thank you. Any question? Thank you, Rajat. Very Thank nice you. presentation. I Thank have you. very simple few questions. Why patient is asked not to squat or bend down like in Bajrasan after the knee replacement? So, in knee replacement, because in the squatting or kneeling, the knee gets in extreme degree of uh, movement, flexion, 140 degrees. So there may be chance of dislocation, but that's not the exact reason. The main reason is when you put the pressure of the knee, that metal thing, it start degrading. So if you will be putting the pressure frequently, the, because it's a metal, it will be degrading in let's say 20 years. Because the life of a knee is even with the best quality is 20, 25 years. But if, if you are putting pressure on it, the metal will start degrading faster. So a knee which was supposed to work for 25 years, it may get degraded in let's say 10-15 years. So you can squat or kneel, but it's not recommended because degradation will be faster. So it is degradation or dislocation type? Dislocation because but now the good designs have high move, high flex knees are there. Earlier the knee was uh, limiting up to 110-120 degrees. And let's say we want to squat or kneel, the knee bends to 130-140 and it gets dislocated. But now the new designs they go up to 140 degrees, the no, which was the normal knee movement. So dislocation is now not an issue if you are putting that knee. If you are putting the earlier design's knee, dislocation is a problem. But with the new designs, because up to now, sir, capping has come, all the knees are the same price. So now, what is the high flex best knee? That is what everyone puts. Because the first knee that came from 1.5 lakh, that is now 60,000. So the high flex knees were costing 1.5 to 2 lakhs. But now after capping, they are also 60, 65,000. So because the price is same, so everybody is putting high flex knee. So dislocation is not a problem. Degradation is now main problem. Jogging also increases degradation? Yeah, jogging. Anything which puts the pressure on the knee will degrade. <coughs> so we recommend walking. You do a brisk walking, that's fine. But while jogging, you are uh, putting your uh, leg up and you are just pressing it. So that's cause pressure on the knee. So anything which puts pressure, will impact the metal and it will start degrading it. So it's not that you can't do jogging. It's the only thing that if you will doing it very frequently, it will start, it will do the degradation faster. Uh, one more question. Uh, what is the status of chondrocyte culture these days and chondrocyte Yeah, so chondrocyte culture, this is a new technique uh, in US. Uh, it has been followed, but it's very costly. What we they do, that the cartilage is damaged from the central portion where the weight is there. On the side, the cartilage is fine. So what the people are doing, they are taking some cartilage from there, they are culturing it into cartilage, and they are injecting it in the areas in which the cartilage is gone, hoping that cartilage will uh, regrow there. But this is also experimental, but uh, you can't uh, say for sure that this will work. But people are doing in uh, bigger cities and let's say mainly in US and the Western countries. Like other body organs like uh, brain, nervous tissue, cartilage is not being genetically engineered and grown in laboratory. Yes, because cartilage is a thing, if it's gone, it's gone. Bone also regrows. In our lengthening surgeries, we cut the bone and we try to stretch it, the bone starts growing. But cartilage is one thing that if it's gone, it's gone. And now the people are trying to regrow it, but still now there are no definitive studies that it will do. So, because in our patient scenario, we can't, we can't just say patient, okay, let's try it and because it will be costly. And uh, the patient at the end will say that there's no relief. So it's good for the academic hospitals where money or other things are not a problem. So academic hospitals are doing it. They have, I think in AIMS, they have started doing it. But in private practice, I think still there is time it will be followed. Yeah, another question. What does it when we have starting pain early after our practice? What drug do you recommend that our team will be Currently, currently the best drug is collagen type two. 
among all the cartilage supplements, as I said, there is chondroitin sulfate, glucosamine, and collagen type 2. Among them, collagen type 2 is showing most promising uh, uh, currently, but still, it's not proven. It's still not proven. You can uh, go for collagen type. Painkillers are always SOS. If the patient is having pain, you just give, ask them to take a tablet. But in routine, collagen type 2 and calcium.